Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rainbow Room. I'm here with my special guest, Matt Schneider, and today we'll be discussing hacks. So please join me in welcoming Matt. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> please be seated. <laughs> no, keep standing. <laughs> keep those claps going. Um, so, uh, Matt, you are a comedian who lives in L.A. and then Yes, also- guilty. Guilty. <laughs> oh, I knew what you were about to say next. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. also a lawyer. Yes, that was the guilty. A liar. A lawyer. Yeah. A lawyer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a lawyer, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, you were in a show on Out TV called For the Love of Dills. Correct. A reality show. A reality show. Yeah. Uh, what was what was that like being on that show? Um, well, I wasn't on it for long, so unlike some people, I didn't have. A, I had a very good experience actually. I was in and out, and uh, got very positive feedback from tons of people. Who anyone who saw it is like, "Oh, we wish you were on longer." And I'm like, "So was I. Oh, so did I. I. Wish I was on. So I didn't get. I don't know. I've never. Ha- I didn't have any negative experience. I think some people on uh, reality TV fame gets. You know, maybe they're on too long. They overstay their welcome. They get ne- negative backlash from people who didn't enjoy them, or they saw something they didn't like. But, uh, I don't know, had a very positive experience. I would do it again if any reality TV wants to put me in something. That's awesome. Yeah, so the premise of the show is that they took a bunch of uh, uh, himbos and a bunch of daddies and right. they put them all in a house together. Yeah. And, right, you were supposed to mingle and match up and then the winning couple at the end uh, ideal, ideally is going to find happiness and love for the rest of their life together. Was this your first time on TV? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Definitely reality TV. I guess I was pausing only because I was on like a game show or two. Well, as, oh, really? Just like random. Content. Well, yeah, what game shows are uh, there? One was Celebrity Name Game. I don't know if you if you know that. If, okay. It was like a show. Craig Ferguson hosted the show. And like Vivica A. Fox was my teammate. <laughs> so, so some stupid game show. Like okay. It's almost like pass. It wasn't exactly password, but you have to like give each other hints. And so, yeah. And actually, I won more money on that than I did on my reality show. So. Yeah, that's pretty fun. That's yeah. cool. How did you even get on the reality show? Uh, just through just from someone contacted me on Instagram. Actually, that's awesome. Yeah, and it wasn't a scam. That's <laughs> right. No, I mean, they, well, then they said I, they encouraged me to apply. It wasn't like they someone said one of the people who worked for the show. Okay, cool. Um, and then I did. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. And they uh, you got a pretty flattering portrayal on it. People liked you. <laughs> yeah. No, I got... And they treated you well? Very well, yes. I no, Literally zero complaints. I enc- That's awesome. Anyone watching, I encourage you to do reality TV. <laughs> no, I don't know if every show is... I, I would say the out TV in particular was like in very eager to portray all the, all the contestants well. That's awesome. Like, I don't think they exploited people. And, you know, I think some reality shows are like eager to just like, oh, let's... Hide in the drum, you know, who cares how the people look? Let's just make it as entertaining as possible. Whereas I'm telling you, on my season of this show in particular, they left a lot of stuff that would have made for great TV, but that also would have made people look bad. Really? So yeah. they cut some stuff that yes. would have made good TV, but they wanted to preserve the... Exactly. Impre- and even with me, they tell... I mean, I'll tell you because I, don't, I'm a com- I do stand-up comedy. They said I made a lot of... I don't know if they said... Not off... They said jokes that could have got me canceled and i'm like really they, so they said it was funny like so i said very funny things but they they didn't want to include it uh for fear that i might be canceled i'm like i don't i'm very confident in everything i say like you could have <laughs> like i don't I'm like i'm running around throwing the n-word oh <laughs> around God, town. Not. i'm not doing that is my point <laughs> so i'm saying like i don't know what they were th- in particular i was afraid you're gonna say that they thought the jokes were bad like oh you said a lot of jokes that weren't funny. no well they ended up including like very daddish you know like corny jokes oh, and so in a way bad. people no that's what they included yeah, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. made it seem like i'm only like capable of like very obvious dumb stupid jokes whereas i felt like a lot of my like best material was a little edgier was edgier and I un- I understand what they were saying. They were worried, you know. I think maybe I'll I, whatever. I don't even get into. But I, maybe I was like commenting on like, oh, I guess I wasn't because one guy liked bears on the show. Mm-hmm. If you want to, you're not even asking. I'm like forcing this on you. So I'm just like, well, I guess I wasn't fat enough for him to like. <laughs> so I think maybe he can. They consider that. 
I see. I see. They wanted to be careful. Yeah. I think along those lines. And, I, and it doesn't sound like you were saying that from a place of punching down either. No, exactly. Right? Because yeah. this was after I was eliminated. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. I, in a way, I felt like I was already, like, discarded so I could, like, punch up it. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. You never punched. As a comedian, I mean, we're going to get into this with Hacks yeah. about that show. But, I mean, I, that's, I agree. that's, like, the one thing I think I agree you should never find – people should never find humor in yeah. is when you're punching down. It's like, what's the, where's the humor in there? Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you questions about comedy, but also about being daddy. You consider yourself a daddy? I didn't until I was on the show. But then once I see some of the people I'm with, I mean, as compared to other people, I guess. <laughs> yes. And, and people have been enjoying that. They're like, yay, daddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never, I mean, I guess it's, I mean, at a certain point, just by age, yes, but yeah. still mindset, no, I don't really consider myself that. You're, you're young at heart. I'm definitely young at heart, Aww. yes. Yeah, and yeah. so your your comedy, what's, uh, yeah, how's your comedy career been going? What's your approach? How's that all? Great. Um, no, yeah, I don't know. I've been, well, I'm not yet world famous, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Unless I unless unless I am like I don't know it, um, so maybe I need to change my Very approach. Few people are right. That's true. But Some all right, not even world famous. Is. Fine, I'm not even nationally comedically <laughs> famous yet, but there's still time. Uh, so maybe I need to change my approach. But at the moment, see, that's why I think I think I tend to set up a, like a very self deprecating uh, tone. I think yeah. in a way so that then it allows me to like make, and then I attempt to feel like I could make fun of anyone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of your style, self deprecation? I think so. But then I've been told sometimes I'm like going too far. And it, I'm like, well, I know, but I'm like, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always so interesting for stand up because it's like you simultaneously have to be the alpha in the room. You kind of have to project so much confidence of like, I am in charge here. I own the stage. But at the same time, you're like, and here's all the reasons that you can laugh at me. It's like a very, right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a tightrope. Like alpha and beta at the same time. It's so funny. Yes, exactly. And sometimes, I think I've been on both sides of going one extreme or the other. Like oh, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it really is like a, a fine line to to yeah. walk because yeah. Fun fact about me: I have a I have a PhD, so I'm Doctor Andrew Steyer, and I oh. never bring it up on stage. Mm. I like never a doctor in what, like uh, Doctor Jill Biden or like Doctor. Oz. <laughs> what specific option for doctor? Well, I'm saying like a medical you doctor. Doctor, doctor Biden or Doctor Oz. I love that. Right. Well, one's a legitimate doctor. One's like. Oh, I have a PhD. In what though? I'm saying computer engineering. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're right. That no, you're 100 percent right. So you're not in either of those categories. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that's legit. That's legit. Not that Jill Biden is not legitimate, but it's just funny when you're like when she's really just a teacher, but she's like insists on people calling her doctor. <laughs> I mean, hey, you have to work hard for that degree. True, but there's still like... Should I insist some people call me doctor? No, but for you also, I think yours is more prestigious than Dr. Jill Biden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you can call me doctor from now on. Deal. But, okay. And actually, arguably, Dr. Oz is sort of a quack also, so I don't even know why I was putting him at like a higher <laughs> threshold than, Bill, than Biden, Jill Biden would. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about hacks. Yes. Okay. okay. So first of all, I... Um, I, I I'm excited to talk about this after the break, but I'll just say shorthand, I loved it. You recommended this to me. I did, and I was shocked that you had it, not that you needed to see it, but more, not even from the gay perspective, honestly, just from the stand-up comedy world. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. to me, that was my entry point into it, was because I, I sort of try out every stand-up show. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, in terms of watching it, and honestly, I, I don't know if you've re you recommend any others, but I never liked any stand-up comedy shows. I always felt the shows about stand-up comedy were, like, not funny in... They might be okay, okay to watch, but they weren't like funny. Like yeah, they. What do you think about Miss Maisel? That's one that people ask me about a lot. I thought that started off well, actually. So you're right. Yeah. That was a good, that was an exception. I've only seen season one, but yeah. Season one, I thought was really good, and then it got so cartoonish, and I don't know. I and even watching. in season one, you know, like there's so many, like even in episode one, there's some eye roll moments. Like she goes to an open mic in Vents, and everyone loves her, and someone takes a picture of her. I'm like, okay, I've never right. crushed so hard at an open mic that someone is like, oh, I need to get, <laughs> we need 100%. to get your picture. Like, okay. <laughs> and also, I don't know if it was the first episode of that, but one episode, she just storms in and off the top top of her head like does a 10 minute set that like has people been rolling in the aisles cheering oh, God, you know I like wish. I, wish I don't even think chris rock has ever done that you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh so how so how did you find out about hacks uh literally i 
I just, I don't even know. I honestly, I think I discovered it before. And just because I had seen a trailer about like, oh, stand up. Oh, maybe because also it, to me, it looked like, I thought it was actually like a biopic of Joan Rivers, actually, who used to be one of my favorite stand up comedians. And they, they claim it's not because I guess they don't want to pay her royalties, but in a, in a way, it's really Joan Rivers' life. Really? I mean, they, they claim it's not, but. What, what makes you say that? Because Joan Rivers was a QV, is the only comedian to do QVC, the only woman comedian to host. I mean, I don't know if you've seen other episodes of the, of Hacks, but in the, the main character, Jean Smart, is also a host on QVC. She was the first woman to be a, a substitute host for The Tonight Show, which Joan Rivers was. Joan Rivers performed in Las Vegas, which this woman does also. She has one daughter in the show, which Joan Rivers did as well. Uh, wow. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't catch any of that. That's wild. Yeah. But I think because they don't want to pay like royalties or make it like the Joan Rivers story, they claim it's like based off of multiple women. TTT. I love that. Yeah. But, jo- I mean, to me, Joan Rivers was definitely the funniest woman of all time. And I think maybe one of the funniest stand-ups of all, in my opinion. So that was actually, now that I think about it, that was like more my entry point initially. Into yeah. It. Uh, for me, I um, I follow Meg Statler on Instagram. Oh, yeah. So I didn't even know. I, I well, apparently, I only know her for after seeing her on the show, but a lot of people know her. From the high gay. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. To this day, I still don't even know anything about her other than her being on Hacks. <laughs> oh, wait, have you not seen High Gay? No. Oh, my God. It's gay lore. You have to see it. Okay. I don't even know what it is. Oh, my God. I'm showing it to you at the break. Uh, but what it's like a, a video YouTube? yeah oh my god all my listeners are gonna be so shocked that you don't know this you're showing your daddy age okay uh, maybe only oh because it's tiktok is that yeah it's, it was like an instagram twitter tiktok thing yeah. yes i to be honest i'm not on the i maybe that is my daddy this is like <laughs> i feel like tiktok is like beneath my age range quite frankly i'm so cute for your ages though but i'm never gonna ask a lady that <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. But yeah, Meg Sattler, I just think is so funny, and okay. so I um, I, sh- I think she was posting clips, or other people were posting clips of her because they also think she's funny. So literally, all I had seen of the show was clips all of the her clips with Kayla. Which, okay. if that's all you've seen, it gives you a very different idea of what the show is. Right, because... It th- looks like it just takes place in an office. I thought it was an office show. Right. And so, when I saw Hacks on, on Max, I, like, saw the thumbnail. I was like, is there more than one Hacks? I don't think this is the right show. So, that's literally, like, the only reason I hadn't watched it initially. Yeah, honestly, even in the first season, I don't even think she's in every episode. Like, she because she became such a fan favorite, she now is... If, in the third season, she's in every episode. Oh, but, really? They put her in more episodes? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh. She's, she but crushed. in the first season, so she was just like, you know, recurring, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, shall we watch the show? I guess. Why not? If you insist. Let's watch the <laughs> show. And we're back. Hello. Woo. Uh, okay. So as I already kind of spoiled in the first part, I loved this show. Oh, my God. I loved it so much. I did, too. I've only yeah. seen season once. This is just me having seen season okay. one. But I watched it pretty quickly, considering you didn't tell me about that show that long ago. You're like, oh, let's do this one. Wait, and you did finish the whole season? Yeah, all of season one. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's super good. I think it's great all through season three, even, actually. Yeah, yeah. People were telling me it's really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so, buckle up. Buckle up. You got a, a long way to go of good comedy to come. Yeah. Honestly, I think it is the best comedy on TV right now, I would say. Ooh, Easily. That's a strong word. That's awesome. I mean, I was a fan of Curb Your Enthusiasm also, but that just ended, and I thought it didn't have a great final season. So, other than that, I don't even know what comes close, to be honest. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what was your what, what really stood out to you about this show? I think, to be honest, I think as a stand-up comedian, maybe you could relate, or, uh, but I was hinting at before, to me it's the best show about stand-up comedy. Mm. Also, because I think a lot of shows, maybe, or maybe I'm clueless, about, oblivious, like, because a lot of shows about stand up comedy paint this picture that, like, comics are, like, sad off stage and they only are, like, funny, you know, they turn it on when they get on stage, but that they have, like, a depressing, horrible existence off camp. You know, Louis, the show, Louis, uh, Louis C.K., or the, uh, Crashing. I don't know if you saw that HBO show about stand up comedy, also. Oh, uh, and then, all, I don't know, I've just never seen a good, funny show about stand-up comedy. And to me, even though there's, like, moments of, like, drama and emotion in Hacks, I feel like it's always funny. And it's, like, even Gene Smart, the main character, 
is just a funny person on and off stage. It's not like she saves the jokes for when she's on stage. She's very funny with all her assistants. She, you know, she makes fun of her, her writer, the, the, her co-star all the time. You know, it's a running joke that she says she has big hands and she dresses horribly. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, she is a lesbian, but she like comments about how she has no fashion sense, which I guess lesbians don't really have. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Is this a kind of stuff they were cutting out of uh, the Bill show? Maybe. Like, All right. Well, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there any f- lesbian fashion icon? <laughs> I'm not a fan of um, a fashion. I was about to say lesbians. No, lesbians. Oh my God. I'm fine with lesbians. That was a joke. Fine with them. <laughs> I don't mind them. No, we love lesbians. I, I, well, I'm not lining up to have lesbians... Uh, to, to date lesbians is my point. Yes, uh, that's. I think the world. I think they. And they're not lining up for me either. It's a double edge, non street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, <laughs> I don't know. Mixing metaphors here. Um. Yeah. But the main Hannah, the the, the writer, the uh, is the funny thing is she starts off the show. I didn't even remember this until I rewatched it. She starts off the show by sec- claiming to be bisexual. Hmm. By season three, she's full blown lesbian. Like I don't that bisexual. Oh, spoiler! I'm still uh, in the oh. bisexual era. Okay. Did she end the first season still bisexual? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, she's she's lesbo now. <laughs> Watch out, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I think in real life the act the uh, comedian is lesbian. Also, or, I don't know. Maybe she. Yeah, no, I looked this up. So uh, Hannah and Bender. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, how, how do you say her name? Einbinder? Hannah Einbinder? Einbinder. Einbinder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she's openly bisexual uh, yes. in real life. Which is cool. And fun fact, she's the daughter of SNL cast member Lorraine Newman. There. What? I brought cast, I brought some facts with me. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. You know that cast, you know her, right? That I don't know if you know that, but she was a older SNL cast member. Oh. So she's got funny genes so she's in the family. interacting with uh, old, older women comedians. Old hacks. Yeah. <laughs> old hacks, wow. Um, yeah. Uh, and then another really cool thing. So first of all, just to give a shout out to the creators. Uh, it's created by Lucia Aniello, Paul Downs, and Jen Statsky. And another fact we both noticed is that Paul Downs, one of the creators, is also in the show as the right. manager. As, yes. As their agent, I think. As their agent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's great. Oh, my God. Yeah. Is that character gay? I thought that character was gay when I first watched episode one. If, I know he's not. No. Oh. You know I, w- why I think he's funny? Because honestly, again, not to make this all about me, but I, he acts the way I think. Like, I don't think he's necessarily like an actor. But he, if you've seen interviews with him, he acts exactly like that in real life. Oh, I love that. So in a, And he's, his interviews are funny. Like, oh, perfect. And that's the way they should be. And so in a way, that's why I feel like I could be a good actor, too. Because I'm, I feel like I'm arguably naturally somewhat humorous so like to me it's just uh, if you just act yourself sometimes it could be funny so i'm in my mind or I, if you look at him it's, he's really just like acting the way he acts in real life that's awesome. and, and, uh, but he's not gay in real life so i don't even know what the point of my that little diatribe was he's actually married to one of the you know the three creators of the show so two of them are married the character isn't gay either though is he no okay yeah yeah exactly he's not because um, there's a on again off again flirtation with him and his assistant um with kayla yeah is it on again? Does he flirt back? You're right. It's not on. I mean, <laughs> fine, it's not on again, off again. <laughs> it's a one-way flirtation, right? Oh, my God. So I don't think it would be weird if she's flirting with him the entire time and he's yeah. gay. You that, know what I mean? Like, that last episode where she books a bed for the both of them. Oh, God. Yeah. And he's, like, trying to get them to get a cot. <laughs> right. So it's, it, that's an ongoing thing throughout the three seasons is her, like, comically trying to flirt with him and him... Uh, rebuffing her advances. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the gay representation in this show. Yes. Um, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Like, I, like, specifically, I can speak to the gay male experience, but it's like, it feels very real. Um, and, and both uh, roles are played by actual queer uh, people. Uh, so Carl Clemens Hopkins is non binary, they, them. Um, he plays the COO. Um, and then uh, John Silvilli plays the the water guy. Right. Uh, I I love Johnny Silvilli. He's in um uh, he's in the Queer as Folk reboot, which is where I first saw him. Oh, okay. That, and that's more recent, isn't that, or is that probably? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it feels like Hacks is recent, but it's probably just the latest seasons that are recent. Okay. I've only been finding hearing about it recently, but um, 
Queer Ass Folk reboot was like two years ago, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah so th- this is Hack's third season, so it was three. So yeah, simultaneous. But th- yeah, have you seen him in anything else? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, no, very good. So cute. Too. Yes. Yeah, I I would love to play opposite with him one day. Actually, I would love to get him on this podcast. So oh, watch what I say, Johnny okay. Civilli. Please come on my podcast. Even okay. though I'm openly thirsty for you on this episode. Watch out. No, I'll be professional, <laughs> I promise. Um, yeah, because I, he's not in the second, the next two seasons as much, honestly. Oh, so I don't want to get your hope. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's talk about that. So, but uh, yeah, the main, the her COO, uh, what's his name? Oh God. On the show, I'm. Sure. I know, I forgot the character's name. Um, you have your phone on you. He has the ongoing. Uh, he's like the. He has an ongoing gay male uh storylines that you know that represent representative of the gay male experience arguably yeah yeah the it, it's the little things like how he uses grinder and like right. opens it looks and it's like i think it's actually grinder too they don't use like a substitute right um, and then in addition to him because i told you i mentioned uh the, the main character uh is playing a character who sort of resembles joan rivers in a way but so she throughout this multiple seasons, they, she, she constantly says her gay uh, fans. She has a lot of gay male fans. Mm-hmm. Um, and then whatever, I don't know if it's spo- but there's a funny episode in the second season where she goes on a gay cruise, eager to find. She's like, "Oh, my gays will love me there, right?" And then she shows up, and her agent didn't tell her it's like a lesbian cruise. Oh. And then the, it's one of the best episodes, and it's all the lesbians hate her. So it's actually fun. Like she, her, it's a totally different clientele for whatever reason. Like lesbians, I think it's accurate. Also, not to keep harping on lesbians, but I think lesbians and gay men have totally different senses of humor. They, well, they can be, uh, you know, have, um, they can be very different crowds. You yeah. Know? Um, I've done well, that. I think in reality, I'm just saying the show I think represented that well, and I I've come across it. I don't know if you think the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done shows when I um I, I opened for Rob Anderson. That was okay. a room full of gay men. All those men were gay. Mm. But a lot of these queer shows that I get uh, that I get to do, um, oftentimes they're uh, they're mostly um, either uh, like it's a lot of female presenting or or women, basically mm. queer people, and then I'm usually one of the only men. Um, and so the audience ends up reflecting that too. Mm. It's like, oh, I'm I'm performing for a lot of lesbian women, um, and different jokes work differently for those two crowds. Exactly. Yes, that was my only point. Yeah, and and they're both completely different from straight crowds too. You know, like not completely very different. true. Obviously, there's a lot of humor the whole world shares, but those mm. crowds do play like differently for sure. Right. Um. Yeah. Uh. And then another really cool fact is that uh, Pat Regan is one of the writers, uh, and he's a gay stand-up comedian who, uh, well, and okay. just comedian in general, but mm. he's hilarious. Um, he was on Z-Way, too. He has a great episode. On, he has a, mm. Did you watch Z-Way? No. Oh, oh by the way, I showed um, I showed Matt during the break. I showed you the high gay video. Which oh, yes. Know? Of, what's her name again? <laughs> Meg Sally? Meg's, yes. Uh, yeah, it's very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard she's a funny stand-up comic. The funny thing, also, Jean Smart is just an actress. She's not actually a stand-up comedian. Uh, mm-hmm. But ha- Hannah, her writer, is a stand-up comic. And then Meg is a stand-up comic also. So I feel like, they, you know... All the, the actresses? Yeah, the two actresses are legitimate stand-up com- comedians as well. But Jean Smart is just portraying a stand-up comedian. And so, really doing well. And doing amazing, yes. Yes. Uh, so I think the Emmy nominations just came out today morning. Yes, and she, well, not only, I mean, she's obviously nominated, but she actually, I think, won both every year she's been nominated so far. I think she's now two years straight winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a timely time to do this show because it is getting amazing. Yes, of course. Really, and really and renewed for season four. So also, it's coming. It's, I think, also, Inside Scoop, if anyone cares, I think I heard an interview where they, they envisioned this being a five season show. Oh, and luckily, uh, because of the awards it gets, It'll get it'll get the runway to do it because unfortunately I don't think it gets that it's it's not like highly rated quite frankly so maybe this podcast will help shove viewers towards it I don't think so but honestly it's partially because it's like on Max as opposed to HBO it's like you know it's, you know it's, there's a whole weird diver, uh, dichotomy between HBO shows and Max shows and people get confused and it's hard to find it oh I didn't no. just, I thought HBO was Max now. Well, it ain't. So I think a lot of people are confused by that. 
<laughs> okay, we're still on. Uh, I think what you just said is what has people has has had people confused, and that's why it hasn't gotten the viewership I think it deserves. Interesting. Yeah, okay, I think I think as of like re, as of next year, it'll be finally merged completely. I think they're doing away with Max only shows. Oh, weird. Okay. But up until now, ha- even this past season, Max Hacks was not on HBO. It was only on Max. Okay. You know, because a lot of people, older people still don't have stream. Some people just have cable and then just pay for cable. They don't pay for streaming services. Interesting. Not to get into the weeds of uh, streams. No, no, no. I mean, I think if you're going to get into the weeds about the way the entertainment industry is right now, this is the place to do it. Because stuff is so top of mind, especially when it comes for like queer media and being seen in the mainstream so if this is somehow being like not blocked from the mainstream it is it's good that's such a shame i know but i wouldn't blame it on the queer stuff because honestly it was a lot of weird shit like peacemaker i don't know if you saw that show with john cena that was also just on max yeah yeah, yeah. um although not many other shows were so i don't know why because then they like the last of us was an hbo show oh that was a gay did you do that that had a lot of gay episodes. The Last of Us, yeah. the zombie show. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we've actually covered it yet. Okay, you should. Me too, yeah. Um, so that was an HBO only show. <laughs> God bless. And then as a result of that, got way more attention. You know, whatever's on HBO proper gets way more attention than what's on Max. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe with this podcast, we're pushing the energy yeah, towards so getting good. hacks onto regular HBO. Yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. Um, right, subscribe to Max, and then yeah. because you can't watch it, on, you gotta get it on Max. It's still, honestly, a laugh a minute. Like, yeah, it's um, you're right. She's funny off stage and on. The dynamic they have is funny, and it also feels very real and believable. Like the reactions of the people feel so real. Right, there's a couple of really freaking dark moments too. I know, and right, and they they pl- play it for seriousness. You know, there's that episode in the first season where the, this guy's like in love with her, spending all his money on her, and then kills himself. It's crazy. And it was like, that's the reason why he was like, he knew it was his last day on Earth. So he was just yeah. like. Yeah, and, and you have just enough foreshadowing about it that when it happens, you're like, you like you know it's him and basically before it even yes. like, it's revealed. And also, they do it so skillfully that even though it's so sad, it's also like somewhat funny in a way that it this it like True, but the, that it happened that they, it, they do give the moment it's justice though like yeah when she the music they play when she's going up to her room um it was, it was like the most emotional part of the whole season yeah. i think is like her discovering that uh and there's little signs when he like casually says that he's blown sixty thousand dollars and then he gives that foreshadowing hint of like oh yeah sometimes life clears a path for you and you jump and you're like oh, i hope not you know right and so, oh my gosh, um, yeah, and her talking about it afterwards, yeah, right. You know, I, that's why to me it's not just for chuckles either. I mean, it's like an impo- it's in, it's a good show. It's it's emotional, but at the same time, you're laughing the whole time. What more do you want from a show? Yeah, come on, people. And it reels you in right with the first pilot when mm-hmm. uh, when she's like um, when they're fighting basically, and this is when, when she's about to get the job and. She's like, oh, do you need to collect urine from me so you can test my blood? Oh, I'll just leave a stool sample on your lawn. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and she makes fun of the couch that uh, Liberace had sex on or something. Uh, and, yeah, and then uh, Gene Smart's like, no, actually, he enjoyed the couch a lot. <laughs> he was here. <laughs> Such yeah. a flex. Right. No, it's really... And also, again, I'm not... It, each season is completely different. So it's that's why it's all... It's really... It's like they're not repeating their... Uh, shtick, shtick. Yeah. yeah, but it's not. To, I mean, it's not spoiling any. But in the season two, they go on the road, so oh, that's not. Yeah, so that yeah. so instead of like being in Las Vegas the whole time, they're like all traveling on the road. In the third season, she's like pursuing trying to get a new job. I won't spoil it, but it's so it's a totally different dynamic, also. Whoa. And then the fourth season, which hasn't happened yet, is going to be a completely new show, also because of something that happens in the third season. Okay. So what's uh, what's your favorite moment of of hacks of your first season of the first season? Yeah, um, I think I'm trying to think. I guess was the first. I I don't know why to me it stood out as just being hilarious when she needed the phone unlocked. 
Uh, oh because, my God. because she left the voice message where she like cursed her out and she wanted to delete it. And so she has the idea, that, you know, it's the, the phone is locked, but you need, a, you need her face. The writer needs the face of her boss to unlock the boss's phone to delete the message that she left. And so she comes up with the idea that she'll go to Madame Tussauds Wax Museum to use the fake face of her boss, and it works. That was a... Okay. For me, well, I laughed And so out, I, I thought that was really funny I and creative. I loud when she was trying to use... Like, her boss was sleeping, and she's trying to use it on her, and she just drops the phone on her as she's All right, that was... Right. Um, and, right, so that whole episode, I mean, just that, that yeah. uh, plot line was very funny yeah i think the the pilot was so good i, mm-hmm. I love the manager uh in that first scene just being like handing over a tissue and being like uh um please wipe your tears like that chair is new and mm-hmm. yeah uh yeah well i'm really excited i'm excited that this show had uh just to, i guess we should talk a little bit more about the queer representation because um i think those characters are treated with a lot of of respect oh um, yes i think the relationship feels real um and fun and funny and um uh I, it was cool that b- the both characters actually were or both actors actually were queer and that they were able to like portray these roles i think with like it just super believable you know right that was refreshing to see and, and um also cool that they got uh, an actual bisexual actress to play the bisexual character um, right, and also I love that, like Jean, the, the main character, the woman, the is not like on board with, uh, or not understanding bisexuality or gay people, and then in a way, it's like open. The whole season is like opening her eyes to it. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, not that she's like a homophobe, but she's just you know dismissive of. Well, she's not that because her assist, you know, her CEO, but I guess. But whatever, that's the dynamic. You need her room for the character to grow. Yeah, yeah, it touches it's, on some important topics. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, so in a way, she like grows, even through, mul- through multiple seasons, you'll see like she becomes more like, more of an ally. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Even though she was out, I mean, she had, she knew her gay fan base was like. Sure, sure, sure. But yeah, I mean, even people who are allies, there is a lot to mm. learn, right? Yeah, yeah oh, definitely. This, even people who are supportive, there, it's totally possible for them to have ignorances. I'm sure we've all experienced that with people in our lives. Right. Like, oh yeah, you support me, but oh, you have some stuff to learn. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's let's go into final thoughts. Okay. Uh, what are your final thoughts that you'd like to tell our audience about this show? Uh, just I encourage people to watch it. Maybe if we get some uh, spotlight on it, maybe they'll bring us on. <laughs> <laughs> doing stuff like I don't, you know, as stand up comics, you know, there could be a show. Uh, you know, they did a show in Palm, you know, in one of the episodes in the later seasons, they go to Palm Springs Pride. Oh my God. Um, so maybe they end up doing a show in LA where they need gay stand up comics. So it would be great if the two of us could be, uh, yeah, guest stars. Oh my God, please book us on the show. Yes. Love that. Um, yeah, because we're both. Very funny stand up comedians. Day. Yes. <laughs> well, speak for yourself. No, we're both. <laughs> um, yeah, my final thoughts. Um, gosh, I have so much praise for this show. I think the acting. Did I just turn off my Okay. I have so much praise for this show. I think the acting is incredible. I think the 